The time has finally come. I ranked the open worlds, the protagonists, and the villains of the Far Cry series. And the time has finally come to rank the Far Cry games. I've been building up to this for a while now as I've been reviewing and playing all the Far Cry games for nearly two years. So this may be my last Far Cry video, at least for a little bit. We still got the Joseph C DLC in March. Just to clear some things up though, before we get started, I'm only going to be ranking the mainline Far Cry entries. So the console spin-off exclusives like Vengeance and Instincts, along with Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, as great as it is, won't be part of this ranking. Also, just a reminder, this ranking is just my opinion, so feel free to leave yours down in the comments. I'm really curious what you all think, but other than that, let's get into the ranking. Coming in last place and receiving the honor of my least favorite Far Cry game is Far Cry New Dawn. Far Cry New Dawn is more of an in-between game like how Primal was between 4 and 5. And while New Dawn definitely still has its moments, it doesn't stack up to the other games for me. The story was ultimately pretty boring for me aside from the parts with Joseph Seed. That's probably one of the best parts of the game. Mickey and Lou are kind of forgettable. They're not bad, but I didn't find them particularly interesting, especially compared to the big villains of the series. The main character is the mute security captain, and yeah, that's it essentially. The side characters are mostly from Far Cry 5, like Kim Rai, which is cool, but it doesn't make the story much better. The world is just a small portion of Far Cry 5's world that's been decorated with bright, vibrant colors and a lot of pink. Still a good looking world, but it's pretty bare and small. The RPG mechanics is probably one of the biggest turnoffs for me in this game, with the ranking slash leveling system, the massive health bars, damage damage sponge enemies, completely unnecessary in Far Cry games. I also don't like the whole crafting system and the weapons. There's no weapon customization, you can't edit scopes or skins or even barrel attachments. I'm just not a fan of it compared to the traditional style. The powers are also a pretty controversial new addition in New Dawn where you get these supernatural abilities like a double jump, super punch, invisibility, increased speed, etc. I personally am one of the people who actually like these powers, don't get me wrong, I'm glad they aren't in the other games, but as something unique for New Dawn, it was fun and different for sure and helped to refresh the experience a little bit. But that also brings us to one of the biggest complaints with New Dawn, and that it's just too short. A lot of people think it should have been a DLC for Far Cry 5. I don't know about that, but it's definitely not up to standard with what we're used to in Far Cry games. Also, one kind of random thing that really annoys me about this game is the stealth detection. Stealth detection feels broken to me. In this game, you try to shoot someone with a bow, or suppressed weapon, and it's like everyone in the base hears it and sounds the alarm every time. Something is wrong with the detection in this game, even on easy difficulties it happens, so I don't know. There's plenty of reasons though why I feel New Dawn is the worst Far Cry game, even though I admittedly still had some fun moments with the game. At number 7, we have the game that started it all, the original Far Cry. I just played the original Far Cry recently, and I was honestly shocked with how different it was from literally every game in the series. It almost gave me Jurassic Park meets Crisis vibes, which is not something you would expect to hear when talking about Far Cry. It's got this fantasy sci-fi element to it with the Trigens as a main enemy type, but different doesn't mean it's bad by any means. The game has aged surprisingly well for a game from 2004. I mean, the graphics are amazing for the time. The gunplay, while a little simple, is still really fun and challenging at times. Stealth is practically non-existent, but there's still that strategy and satisfaction, and being able to sneak by guards to not have to deal with so many at once. This game can be quite hard, especially with the big Trigen enemies, and there's a certain satisfaction in being able to clear these levels using any tools or strategies you can come up with. I don't really know if this game can even be considered an open world. There are parts that are open, but you usually only have a few paths to explore. There's also a lot of completely linear missions, some of which feel horror inspired, as you go through laboratories and dark hallways fighting off Trigens. The story, while admittedly pretty awful, is one of those situations where it's almost so bad that it's good, if you catch my meaning. The voice acting and dialogue is just so bad that it's hilariously entertaining. It feels like your classic old school action spy movie. Like, ironically, it feels like the spiritual predecessor to 
of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. The corny lines and dialogue, the badass killing machine for a main character, the damsel in distress you constantly have to save. It's something you've likely seen a lot before and it's so cringy, but also just so funny. I mean, it's no wonder this game is so different, considering it wasn't even developed by Ubisoft. It was developed by Crytek, but this game is still a worthwhile experience, I think. With that said, still not on the level as the ones above it in the ranking. This was a tough decision for me, but at number 6, I'm going with Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 is such a mixed game for me, there's elements of it I really enjoy, whereas others are questionable design choices. This game does have a cult following of fans though. Haha, <laughs> get it? Cult? Why are you the way that you are? But let's start with what I do like. Despite everything, I actually really like the story. Joseph Seed is a great antagonist in my opinion, and that's not because he's a scary, intimidating villain, which he can be sometimes, to be fair. It's more because he's a relatable and likable guy. I think religion and faith being a big theme of this game plays into that a lot, and I really like how it delves into all of that. Someone in the comments of my ranking video of the villains used one of my past quotes saying, the best villains are the ones that make you question whether they're actually the villain or not. And I think that absolutely rings true here for Joseph. Not to mention this game easily has the best side villains of the series. In my opinion, the Seed family is great. Each has their own twisted personality and motivators, all with different goals and each being scary in their own way. John annoyed you so much you had to shoot his plane out of the sky. Jacob intimidated and knocked you down a peg after you thought you were the biggest badass alive after dealing with the other family members. And Faith made you want to change teams and join the bad guys. But that's just just it. The Seed family? Are they really the bad guys? Yes and no, there's no villain here. In my eyes, both sides do some pretty terrible things, including the main character, the Deputy, and I honestly believe if the Deputy spoke and had an actual character arc, this story would be infinitely better. But probably the worst part about the story for me is just the terrible mission design. It completely breaks the flow and pacing of the game. First of all, being forcefully kidnapped out of the world into a confrontation with the villain is kind of stupid. Like, at least the last us the opportunity to escape and not be captured, and the fact that you can do just a bunch of side quests and activities to fill up the confrontation meter is really dumb. You can actually avoid doing a lot of story missions by doing that, which should not be a thing. The gameplay doesn't really do a whole lot special, it's pretty similar to Far Cry 4 and 3. It does feel a bit smoother, and being able to throw melee weapons and do funny trick shots with them was really fun. Montana isn't the best world, it's not a particularly interesting location, but it does tie in well with the story and Joseph, and it's still pretty unique for the series. It's the only game in the series that takes place in America, and that therefore made it a lot more relatable for many Americans, especially those who live in Montana. Personally though, I'd always prefer the more exotic locations in Far Cry. The world itself can feel kind of empty sometimes, but it's definitely still a fun one to explore, and as always, I really enjoy clearing out the outposts. Plus, there's the arcade mode, which is so underrated. It was actually really disappointing for me they didn't keep that for Far Cry 6, one of the best modes I think they've made for a Far Cry game, and it just allows for so much creativity and customization. Again, Far Cry 5 is just a really mixed bag for me, and I know a lot of people love it, which I can totally understand. At number 5, we have the newest Far Cry game, Far Cry 6. I was debating a lot about whether Far Cry 5 or 6 is better in my head, but ultimately I think 6 is slightly better. It acknowledged a lot of the issues with 5 and changed or fixed some of my major issues with that game. For starters, having a fully voiced protagonist was huge, and strengthened the story at least on that end. There wasn't the stupid mission structure Far Cry 5 had with the confrontation meter, there was more gun customization, more unique weapons, and the Supremos, which were pretty fun. More clothing customization, even if I'm not a huge fan of that. I think even getting small things back that were missing in Far Cry 5 were nice as well, like the machete takedowns, the classic gruesome healing animations. Even being able to call your car over to you was a really nice addition for me. But what really differentiates 6 from 5 for me is the world. Yara is a great world, and I definitely prefer it to Hope County. I also like all the new little world activities, like the AA bases, 
bridges and checkpoints, along with the classic outposts, of course. The gameplay is still pretty fun, especially with Resolver weapons and Supremos. I really like those, and the more in-depth customization with mods and all that was nice. However, I dislike how they opted to keep the health bars, and probably one of the biggest issues with the game in general, and just a stupid decision was the removal of all the different difficulty settings, because this game is just way too easy regardless of choosing action or story mode. It's so easy to just use a pistol or rifle, throw on a suppressor and armor piercing bullets, and just one shot headshot everyone regardless of their armor type. You could easily go this whole game without a single death if you try, and it really does make the game dull and boring sometimes. Some people might like their games easy, I'm however not one of those people, so why not give players a choice there? Far Cry 5 had it, so I don't know why they felt they needed to change that. I will also say, even though I prefer the voiced protagonist, I actually prefer Far Cry 5's story as opposed to 6. Danny was good, like I said, but the side characters, side villains, and even Anton himself I found to be surprisingly generic and stereotypical. I talked about why I was disappointed about Anton a lot in my ranking of the villains, but the side villains in this game especially are just so forgettable and don't hold a candle to the Seed family. The side characters are unique, although it all has a very wacky, lighthearted tone to it, which to be fair, a lot of Ubisoft games have these days, and I'm not really a fan of it. Like, compare this to Far Cry 3's tone, and it feels totally different. There's still some good moments sprinkled in there, though, especially with Danny, and I also liked Diego Castillo, but both characters definitely had a lot more potential, in my opinion. So improvements and steps forward in some areas, and big steps backwards in others, but overall, I still enjoyed Far Cry 6, and the DLCs, whew, the DLCs aren't factoring into this, but if they were, then Far Cry 6 would be much higher, because I've personally enjoyed the DLCs more than the main game itself. This one was actually very difficult, and I kept going back and forth at it, but at number 4, I decided to go with Far Cry Primal. My opinion on Far Cry Primal has changed quite a lot since my original playthrough of it. I've come to appreciate how unique it is from the rest of the series, and honestly it's a huge refresher from the other games that start to feel the same every time in terms of gameplay. I absolutely love the setting of this game. The world and graphics look incredible, it's such an atmospheric and immersive game. This is probably one of the best games you can play that takes place in the Stone Age. There's a big emphasis on hunting and gathering. You can tame animals and even ride some of them, which is a lot of fun. There's nothing quite like it. Seeing all the cool environments and fighting mammoths and saber-toothed tigers, but also being able to tame and ride them as well is awesome. Your weapons are clubs, spears, bows, all of which can be upgraded and improved. The idea of becoming a leader of the tribe and upgrading and bringing more people into your settlement is really fun. There's a great progression system and lots of outposts and side quests to complete in the world. Primal by no means has the best story, but that's another thing that has grown on me quite a bit. Takar is a likable main character as he becomes the leader and warrior of the tribe, fighting off Uls, Udam, and Batari's Azila tribes. The game is also spoken completely in an ancient language, which helps keep the immersion and put you in that world. It would have been pretty stupid if primitives started speaking English. This game can also feel very brutal and survivor-based. There's modes like permadeath that makes the game way more hardcore and realistic. If you die, then that's it. You have to start a new game. There's stamina, you have to eat to survive, and you have to sleep. It's great for those who like survival games or want to make the game as difficult as possible for yourself. I really want to see if I can beat the game on permadeath, so maybe I'll try that sometime. But yeah, Far Cry Primal is a very unique and refreshing experience for the series and a great time. We are now getting into the big three. Starting at number three, we have Far Cry 2. Far Cry 2 is a very beloved game by hardcore Far Cry fans, and it's so different from what we know Far Cry as today, and even a huge difference from the original in 2004. It's also the first Far Cry game Ubisoft ever developed themselves, and evidently is the best one for many people. Far Cry 2 takes on this dark, gritty, realistic tone. You play as a mercenary who comes to Africa to kill someone named the Jackal, a weapon dealer dealing with two opposing factions who are in a war. But because this is the most hardcore Far Cry game you'll ever play, your character gets malaria and is essentially slowly dying throughout the game. The story is very mysterious, especially pertaining to the Jackal, who we now have confirmation after over a decade is Jack Carver from the original game. I really like the Jackal, the mystery element along with the blurring of right and wrong. Nobody in this game is or claims to be the good guy. I mean, you're playing as a contracted killer and 
and the Jackal is playing both sides trying to end the war. The gameplay also reflects this gritty, realistic tone. Guns can get ruined and often jam and degrade over time. The gunplay feels heavy and weighty. Enemies deal massive damage and so do you. No damage sponges, you have a stamina system, there's the iconic brutal healing animations, and of course you're having to do all this while dealing with malaria, which if you're not careful can end up killing you as the symptoms intensify if you don't take medicine which you have to get by completing quests for people. There's enemies all over the world who shoot first, ask questions never. You even get an actual physical map rather than the huge one in the menus, seemingly every open world game has nowadays. And there's a severe lack of fast travel. Now as great and challenging as Far Cry 2 is, there's still some annoyances. Personally, I don't like that even when you clear out the roadblocks and little outposts that guards still respawn there. It can get very frustrating and kind of defeats the purpose and incentive to clear those areas out. The stealth is also very challenging and near impossible at times, which I know some people like because it feels more realistic that the AI aren't complete idiots who can't see past the three foot cone, but it does make stealth unreliable. There's also no autosave, which is really frustrating and you always have to be ready to quick save. Honestly, this game could really benefit from a remaster or even better a remake. That would be so awesome, as a lot of these issues are easily fixable as well. Plus, I think it just plain out deserves a remake. Make it happen, Ubisoft. But anyways, regardless, Far Cry 2 is still a great game, and you could tell the developers really cared about what they were making, which is something we could use more of these days, but it was a different time for video games. This one may really shock people, and this is probably where this ranking video differs from others, as I haven't put Far Cry 3 at number 1. Don't get me wrong, I adore Far Cry 3, without a doubt the best story in the series, and the best characters as well. Jason Brody and Voss are the best protagonist and duo in the series, and how they mirror each other is excellent. Jason's dark character arc and fall is so unique and deep for the series. Voss, of course, as I've said a million times, is amazing and an intimidating villain, and even Hoyt I find to be very underrated. I know everyone talks about Voss a lot, but let's give Hoyt some credit as well. He made a good adversary for Jason. The side characters like Citra, who seduces Jason to the dark side, and Jason's friends, the last remaining light, and the internal battle within him is so well done. And honestly, the Voss Insanity DLC from Far Cry 6 makes this story even better. Far Cry 3 has the best story in the series hands down, and that's likely why it's so many people's favorite. This game also created the formula for Far Cry that is even used now in Far Cry 6. The gameplay is fun and satisfying, all the different kinds of takedowns you can do with a good assortment of weapons and tools at your disposal. The Rook Islands is a brutal world, not quite as much as Africa from Far Cry 2, but certainly a deadly place to Rome. There's tons of outposts and radio towers to complete, and the traversal is quite fun. The story is still the standout for this game, but the gameplay and world definitely holds up. Which just leaves my personal favorite Far Cry game at number 1, the 2014 release, Far Cry 4. I know many people wouldn't agree with Far Cry 4 being at the top, and certainly not above Far Cry 3, but this is such an underrated game in the series in my opinion. The story may not be as good as Far Cry 3's, but it still has a lot going for it. Pagan Min is a tremendous villain, easily one of the most likable I've seen in video games, and his performance is fantastic. I love the theme of Far Cry 4 being between choosing the lesser of two evils, and how you slowly start to realize just how much the quote-unquote good guys suck. Chances are you hate Amida and Sabal, and that was definitely the intention here, I think, because no matter which one you choose, you're again choosing between a lesser of two evils, and it's the exact same thing with Pagan. The Pagan Control DLC fleshed out Pagan in the story of Far Cry 4, and made it a lot more deep and understandable. If they only spent less time with Amida and Sabal, and more time with Pagan, his relationship with Ajay, in his past concerning Ajay's mother Ishwari and Mohan, then the story would be a lot better in my opinion. Pagan needed to be in the game more for sure, and I also wish Ajay felt more present in his own game. Even though he is fully voiced, he kind of feels like a blank slate, and was very stoic, even in bigger story moments and reveals. If Ajay had more of a personality and had more interaction with Pagan, that would have enhanced the story tenfold. Again though, part of me feels Ajay was made to feel like a blank slate intentionally, 
personally, so you can fill in the blanks and become Ajay, since the game leaves many choices up to you. Even from the beginning of the game, deciding whether or not to leave Pagan's dinner table, or whether you should aid and promote Amida or Sabal as the leader of Kirat. But something else about Amida and Sabal that's become more apparent to me, is that Sabal is meant to mirror Ajay's father Mohan, who believes in the golden path and tradition, while Amida is more like Pagan, who believes Kirat needs to change, sell drugs to bring in more wealth for Kirat and bring it into a new age. The story is still very engaging for me, and while it may not be better than Far Cry 3's, it's still up there in the series for me. And then there's the biggest reason I prefer Far Cry 4 over 3, is the gameplay and world. The gameplay feels smoother, there's more weapons and progression, gun customization was introduced, being able to equip sights and barrels on weapons along with the signature weapons that deal tons of damage, it all feels improved overall, whereas the world of Kirat, like I said in my ranking of the open worlds, is easily the best in the series for me, from its stunning visuals and design, to its detail and atmosphere that makes Far Cry 4 so immersive. I may be in the minority here, but in my genuine opinion, Far Cry 4 is the best game in the series, with Far Cry 3 a really close second. But I know there's a lot of Far Cry 4 fans out there like me, so where are you guys at? But that concludes my Far Cry ranking, let me know how you guys would rank the games in the comments and why, and if you haven't played some of these games yet and want to check them out, I've made reviews on literally all of them, so consider checking those out. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like on the video and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. I make a lot of Far Cry related content here, but other than that, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day, everybody.